All right, it is 6 p.m. We do have quorum. I'm gonna go ahead and call this evening's meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals for the City of Florence to order. First item on the evening's agenda is approval of the minutes from the August 26th meeting. Minutes have been submitted to members of the board at ample time to review. Are there any changes or amendments to the to the minutes? I don't, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Next item on this evening's agenda is hearing number BZA-2021-01. It's a request for variance for the setback requirements in table 3-8.1.1 of the Unified Development Ordinance. Location is 1913 Brigadoon Lane. Tax map number 15013-01-007. Owner of record is Brian Poston. Applicant is Brian Poston. And this is a deferred matter from the August 26th meeting. So staff, if you would please uh, update the board as to any new changes to this request. Yes, sir. And the applicant is Brian Patterson. Not I'm sorry. Yeah. sorry. And um, as you knew, no, the last time uh, he was, he is requesting a variance from the side and rear setbacks to put an addition onto an existing garage. And at the meeting in August, the board asked staff to investigate the culvert between behind this property and look at how he was going to mitigate runoff from the garage onto the side property. Um, this is in the Brigadoon subdivision and it is zoned NC15, which requires a 10 foot side setback. And he is asking for um, about a three foot setback um, as seen in the site plan. And these are the photos, um, nothing's changed there. The um, uh, City of Florence Engineering Department looked at the information about the culvert behind. And uh, in 1964, the Sandhurst subdivision was uh, proposed and drained to an existing open ditch running north south between it and what would become Brigadoon. And at that, that time, Brigadoon property was undeveloped. Um, in 1966, Sandhurst expanded to Third Loop Road and they proposed piping along that entire 3,200 linear feet, but there were no recorded easements at that time. And they began the Brigadoon subdivision in 1988 and following in the 90s. And then uh, the last phase came in 2000. Um, the parcel in question contains uh, what was built in phase three, which was in the late 1990s. The phase three drawings show easements on the storm drainage pipe within the subdivision itself, but the piped ditch on the property line does not have an easement. So unless the property, the individual property plots show the easement, which the people involved have not provided any such thing, um, a city cannot prove that there is one. And with 20 plus years of fences and landscaping, um, up to 50 years for the Sandhurst homes, it may be very difficult to gain access to the pipe even if there was an easement over it discovered. So the culvert is considered to be on private property and the responsibility of the individual property owners whose property it is adjacent to. So, but as part of the 2021 stormwater bond, um, Sandhurst is being surveyed and assessed for stormwater issues and may, uh, will take in information from the residents at that time. And then regarding the issue of diverting stormwater runoff uh, from the extension of the building, the owner is willing to install a gutter and downspout on that side of the shop to mitigate any runoff to prevent it from going over the fence on causing any more issues with the next door neighbor. And the next door neighbor has called me and said that he has no problem with the addition. So that concludes staff's report. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions for city staff from members of the board? Uh, I have one. The, the suspected easement or culvert that's now buried. Um, on the last meeting, I, I think what I heard was that it was on, on the neighbor's property or suspected to be on the property behind the applicants. Is that correct? I believe it's right along because it was right on the edge between the two subdivisions. Okay. Right. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, the board will now hear from the applicant, uh, Mr. Patterson. Is Mr. Patterson here? No, he's not. Okay. All right. 
And he did reach out to you, like you said earlier, and said he's willing to make those changes. Okay. Is there anybody here that wishes to be heard for this specific hearing? Um, I have one more question. Okay. Um, on the <clears throat> on the drawing that's on page eleven, it shows uh, uh, this was supplied by the applicant. Um, do we know what the the distance is from the the back corner? of his extension to the property line? Because no, was, I just have whatever numbers are on that site plan that he provided. And then whatever was in his letter. Um. Yeah, the only thing we have on record is just the fact that the request is for a four foot eight inch yeah, uh, the five, decrease. The, yeah. the five foot four inches off the closest Side. corner mm -hmm. and then two eight off the other closest corner mm -hmm. since it's at an angle. Are there any other questions? All right, there being none, the chair will now entertain a motion to either approve or deny the variance request. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. All right, Mr. Chico. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, I'm, I move that we grant the, the request for variance based on the following findings of fact. Uh, that a variance from the terms of the zoning ordinance will not be contrary to the public will not be contrary to the public interest when because of special conditions lateral enforcement of the provision will miss an individual case result in unnecessary hardship in that requiring the setbacks requiring the current setbacks uh, to be met by the addition would result in the inability to expand the existing building as desired by the owner the spirit of the ordinance will be observed public safety and welfare secured substantial justice done because the intent of the ordinance is to require adequate distance from property lines for accessory buildings in residential areas when the house and garage were built three feet was required the required distance for the accessory structures additionally there is a six foot privacy fence between the garage and the neighboring properties both to the side and the rear that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining this particular piece of property Namely, that the garage is already built and encroaches into the side setback. The request is to construct a 240 square foot addition to the rear of it. <clears throat> uh, these conditions do not generally apply to the other property in the vicinity, in that uh, this is a pre existing building that was constructed according to the requirements in place at the time. And the positioning of the building on the current property. Uh, would limit the opportunity to extend as as desired. Five, that because of these conditions, the applicant, the application of the zoning ordinance to this particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of this property in that requiring adherence to the specifics of the setback would not prevent the use of the home as a single family residence. However, the extra workspace desired by the owner would have to be provided an additional accessory building, which would increase visual clutter in the backyard. <clears throat> Six, that the authorization of this variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or the public good and the character of the district will not be harmed by the granting of the variance because the exterior garage, which is visible from the street, will not change. The addition will be finished to match the existing building and the area proposed for the addition is currently unused space and is not visible from the street. Uh, additionally, there is a six foot privacy fence around the backyard. So the proximity to the neighboring properties is not obvious. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chico. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second, but I wanna make a condition to number six that we uh, put the, um, the gutter under that as well too, to make sure that we, the owner adheres to that gutter, but I, I'll make a motion. To approve it as well. Second. We have a motion on the table to 
grant the variance with the condition that the owner install the gutter system as he promised he would. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is granted. The variance request is approved. Next item on this evening's agenda is hearing number BZA-2021-13. Request for variance from the number of freestanding signs permitted along street frontage. Location is 2300 West Palmetto Street, tax map number 15219-01-117. Owner of record is, I'm going to mispronounce this, Cloninger Properties Incorporated. <laughs> Applicant is Florence Toyota, A.G. Jones owner, A.J. Jones owner. Zoning district is commercial general. The board will now hear from city staff. All right, thank you very much. All right, the property owner is requesting a variance from the maximum number of signs permitted to be displayed along a particular street frontage. Um, and this is specifically for a business located in the commercial general district. Um, and it is a variance from table 5-17.2.1B footnote E. Um, so the property owner is requesting to install a third freestanding sign and it will be located at the corner of West Palmetto Street and Holly Circle about 35 feet from an existing sign already in place uh, that advertises for used vehicles. Um, and that will remain in place until an agreement they have with Toyota is um, honored and then they would like to remove the used vehicle sign at that time. So here's a vicinity map of Florence Toyota at 2300 West Palmetto Street. Uh, this is a 6.18 acre parcel and they have about 13,000 square foot of uh, building space. Um, and, and as you can see, they actually have four uh, street frontages. They have West Palmetto, Woodland Drive, Lock Haven Drive, and Holly Circle. And again, as, as the chairman stated, it is zoned commercial general. So these are the existing signs that they already have in place at Florence Toyota. This is the entrance sign. This specifically displays um, or advertises for West Palmetto Street. So height 30 feet, width 10 feet, uh, depth about three feet. Um, and then this is the used car sign that will be in close proximity to the proposed sign. Um, and this was 24 feet high, about eight foot in width and three feet in depth. Here is the UDO table, um, specifically sign regulations um, and uh, businesses in the commercial general district. Uh, you can see under freestanding signs, number permitted per lot takes you to footnote E. Um, and it says lots fronting on two of our streets are allowed one additional sign for each street frontage, but they don't want those signs to accumulate along one street, which is what Florence Toyota is proposing. Um, along Holly Circle and West Palmetto Street. The, the sign will display for Holly Circle and West Palmetto Street. Yeah, it's Caddy Corner. That's exactly right. Um, here is the um, site plan, proposed site plan. Uh, and as, as the planning director said, it is going to be kind of Caddy Cornered, um, Holly Circle, and I don't know what it says, Ben Tree. West Palmetto Street and Holly Circle. I just noticed that. It says Bentry Drive, but it's actually Holly Circle. Right. Should have called that a lot sooner. I apologize. Um, but here's the uh, red circles are the existing signs and the yellow dot is where the proposed sign uh, will be located. All right, and they do have a few options for freestanding signs. Um, this is option one, and they're all about 30 feet high and about the same width and depth. So you're looking at about the same square footage and the same height of about 30 feet. The maximum height for a freestanding sign in commercial general is actually 40 feet um, if it's not close to an interstate, close enough to an interstate. So 40 feet is the max. So this is option one. You can see the little guy for scale on the side. Uh, this is option two, 
again, same location, about the same size for option three. Um, here are the existing freestanding signs, some pictures. Um, the first one, you know, uh, I'm standing along Holly Circle, taking a picture of the used vehicle sign, which they intend to take down in the future um, at some point after their agreement with Toyota is over. Um, and this is just a different angle from West Palmetto Street. Here we are back a little ways. Um, and across the street, you can see the, uh, the food truck uh, facility. So that's what you see in the background. And then the existing freestanding sign at the entrance, this is me standing on Holly Circle, not in Holly Circle, but kind of on the sidewalk. Uh, you can see the entrance sign kind of way, way in the background. And then here's a little bit closer view. All right, and the owner, uh, Mr. Jones, did provide this letter of why they wanted this variance request. Um, and they do talk about displaying Amber Alerts and possibly community events uh, for the city. And the biggest thing was just making sure that the board understood that the used vehicle sign will not be there always. And once removed, this new proposed sign would be in compliance uh, with the Unified <clears throat> Development Ordinance. And, and I should say all, all option one, two, and three are in compliance with the Unified Development Ordinance besides the variance request. Okay. Um, variance conditions, uh, the variance from the terms of this ordinance will not be contrary to the public interest. Um, literal enforcement of the ordinance is intended to limit the number of freestanding signs along any given street frontage, uh, that the spirit of the ordinance will be observed. Uh, the intent of the ordinance is to limit an accumulation of freestanding signs along one street frontage. Uh, the property fronts on four streets and by code would be allowed a sign on each frontage. Um, an additional freestanding sign would bring the dealership's total to three. Uh, one existing sign serving Holly Circle, one existing sign serving West Palmetto, and the proposed sign would be on the corner of Holly Circle and West Palmetto. And, and the reason the owner wanted to do this was just traffic, sure, the high traffic along these streets as opposed to some of the other streets. Um, three, the extraordinary exceptional conditions pertaining to this piece of property. Uh, the parcel does front on four different streets, uh, but most of the vehicle traffic is concentrated on two, West Palmetto Street and Holly Circle. Other properties in the vicinity are limited to one sign uh, per street frontage per code. Um, that these conditions do not generally apply to other property in the vicinity. Um, while some parcels in the area have two street frontages, this particular property is unique that it has four. However, there has been no allowed accumulation of signage within municipal limits. Uh, number five, that because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance in particular property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict um, utilization of the property. Um, a literal enforcement of the ordinance will not restrict the intended use of the property for automobile sales and service establishment, but would prevent an additional freestanding sign along Holly Circle. And finally, uh, that this would not be a substantial detriment to adjacent property. The location of additional signage will be about 35 feet north northwest of the existing sign the the used vehicle sign at the corner of holly circle and west palmetto street and about 450 feet west southwest from the existing entrance side serving west palmetto street uh, the character of this corridor of west palmetto street is commercial in nature and that does conclude staff's report all right thank you very much are there any questions for city staff for members of the board Uh, one question, and I don't know if we know the answer to it, but whenever you were speaking to Mr. Jones, did he tell you how it, he just said, uh, reading his letter for an agreed upon time frame? Do we know what that agreed upon time frame is? I do not know the specific time frame. No, sir. Okay. Yeah, I have the exact same question. Great. <clears throat> So I have no additional staff questions. No. And I believe there's a representative from Florence Toyota that could maybe okay. better answer the time frame question. I'll hold my question for them then. All right. Are there any questions for city staff? All right. There being none, thank you very much. Thank you. 
the board will now hear from anybody who wishes to speak either for or against the variance request. If you don't mind, sir, just step up to the podium and state your name clearly. This, this is a quasi-legal form, so I am going to swear you in, sir. My, my name is Scott Brady. I'm with uh, Casco Sun Company. Right. I apologize for my tardiness. <laughs> it's okay. I thought it was 6.30. It's okay. We moved up about four or five months ago. Sorry about that. My, 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 no, my apologies again. We're, we're glad to have you here. Uh, Mr. Brady, do you, um, if you don't mind, sir, I'm going to swear you in real quick. And it is Brady, correct? It is. Okay. Like the Brady button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you promise that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? I do. Thank you very much. You may proceed. Again, uh, AJ uh, wanted to be here and wished that he could be here. Uh, he had a meeting out of town, an owner's meeting, and he wanted me to thank everyone uh, for, on the board uh, for your time and for your service looking at this uh, uh, project. I unfortunately do not know the specifics on the uh, Toyota agreement. It's a lease agreement, and when that lease agreement is up, he would be willing to remove uh, that sign. I just want to say, I just think this, this sign just, he wants to use it as a community sure. uh, event to review if, if the community has an event or he wants to uh, recognize the, uh, the veterans or the fire department or the police department or community. He wants to do that with as well, as well as uh, speak to his customers. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Are there any questions for Mr. Brady on behalf of members of the board? Other than the, the timeline, is there anything specifically that you could go into as far as how long that lease has been in play? Is, is this, are we looking at 2022 or 2023? Or how long Toyota is going to plan on keeping that going? I mean, I don't know. I know. Yeah. I, how long, how, do you know how long the dealership's been open? Because I, I do not. It's been a good decade and a half, at least, yeah. at that okay. location, yeah. I know when they roll out a certain program, you have to keep that program sign, if right. you will, the white and the red with the yeah. logo. you got to kind of keep that for a certain time. I don't want to speak. Uh, just to, I, I think they're on a five-year lease. And I don't know how much longer is on that lease. I guess what I'm getting, I just didn't know if this sign would – suffice Toyota's requirements to having the color scheme, the logo, the used car. I didn't know if that was his intent is to put up this sign and then three months later, tear down the other one. I just didn't know. No, he would certainly like to do that. But again, I, I apologize. I can't. That's fine. I can't speak for that. <clears throat> right. cool. I don't have any other questions. Anybody else? Actually, for, for city staff. Sure. Go ahead. I can back up. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with that section. I've got a, a friend that lives right next door. Yes, sir. And so I've, I've driv I drove by there this week. And the adjacent, there's five businesses adjacent to it. Right. That look like they were in, they're in converted residential property. So those are, and each one has a sign. So they're, so the five adjacent businesses each have a sign and they're about 100 feet apart. And across the street, the businesses are even more <laughs> spread out. Uh, actually, no, they're tighter. They're tighter. So there, there's even more signs uh, in <clears throat> the businesses across the street. I mean, are, are those in the city also? Because uh, are you some talking of them, some Sonic, of them, or are you talking about their rear road behind a, Toyota? No, no. If you go across Toyota and then crossing Holly Circle or crossing. Little carbon tire. Oh, so yeah, there's, there's like a. Like a street. Actually, yeah, is that Lock Haven Drive? Do you have that presentation? It's uh, uh, yes, no, sir. no, on Palmetto. There's a picture that kind of shows it. Gotcha. Yeah, let me, let me back up a little bit. That way everybody's on the same page. Because, uh, you know, I don't know how much my personal observations are supposed to play into. No, our, go ahead. Our decisions, but I think that's why they. Yeah. Is that the best picture, sir? Or do you like the zoomed out one? Okay. If the, on the, on the zoomed out one? Yes. If you look uh, to the right, there's like five or six businesses in a row, and each one of them Palmetto? has. A, that's on Palmetto. Okay. And each one of those yeah, the have. A, and all they have so. a monument sign. The, each one of those has a monument sign. Yeah. And then across the street, you've got like the, the meat 
Oh yeah, the meat market. market. Whole time meat market. market. Ham, ham seafood. Ham. And I think there's a Midas place. And I'm anyway, going to skip for one second. Uh, this is the zoning map. So this shows everywhere in the city limits. So okay. I think everywhere you're talking about is in the city limits. Each each one of those properties there on Palmetto have a, a monument sign. Mm -hmm. and, and the ones across the street also do as well. So the proposed sign, these proposed signs are actually going to be spread out a lot more than the existing signs on the adjacent businesses. Sure. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. So, yeah. And, yeah. and like I said, that was just when I, when I drove by, I, I noticed Oh yeah, the you know the number of, the number of signs on the adjacent business. Right. Absolutely. Right. So that's yeah, that, that's right. And and by right, a business is allowed one per lot. And and since their lots are smaller, you know, it, it causes a, a greater density of signage. And right. they have a very large lot. I think it's six acres in total. So. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. right. So that was my observation. Oh yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chico. Are there any other questions for either the applicant or city staff? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Brady. Thank you. There being no further questions, the chair will now entertain a motion to either approve or deny the variance request as submitted. I'll make a motion that we approve in that, that a variance from the terms of this ordinance will not be contrary to the public interest. We're owing to special conditions, a literal enforcement of the provisions will in an individual case result in unnecessary hardship. Literal enforcement of the ordinance is intended to limit the number of freestanding signs permitted along a given street frontage. Spirit of the ordinance will be observed public safety and welfare secured and substantial justice done. The intent of the ordinance is to limit an accumulation of freestanding signs along one street frontage. The property fronts on four streets and by code would be allowed a sign on each frontage. An additional freestanding sign would bring the dealership's total to three. One existing sign serving Holly Circle, one sign serving West Palmetto, and the proposed sign will be on the corner of Holly Circle and West Palmetto so that it can be visible from both roads. Three, there are extra, that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property. This parcel fronts on four different streets, but most of the vehicular traffic is concentrated on two. That's West Palmetto and Holly Circle. Other properties in the vicinity are limited to one sign per street frontage. These conditions do not generally apply to other property in the vicinity. While some parcels in the area have two street frontages, this particular property is unique in that it has four. However, there has been no allowed accumulation of signage within municipal limits. Because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance to this particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property as follows. A literal, a literal enforcement of the ordinance will not restrict the intended use of the property as an automobile sales and service establishment, but would prevent an additional freestanding sign on Holly Circle. This authorization of a variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good and the character of the district will not be harmed by the granting of the variance. The location of the additional signage will be about 35 feet northwest of the existing sign on the corner of Holly Circle and West Palmetto and 450 feet west southwest from the existing entrance sign serving West Palmetto Street. The character of this corner of West Palmetto Street is commercial in nature. Thank you very much. Are there any is there a second? A second. All right, and I would like to offer an amendment um, that we uh, continue on with, with the same motion, provided that the applicants submit to city staff in a time that is feasible, some clarification on the time frame and what their intentions are going to be as to when they're gonna remove that sign per his letter. Are there any objections to that? No, nope. all right, that's good. All right. We have a I'll, second. I'll second the amendment. Okay. All those in favor of granting the variance request signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? 
The ayes have it. The motion is granted. The variance request is approved. Ready. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Apologize for the miscommunication on the time frame. You are more than welcome to stay and witness your government in action, but I understand if you've got other things to do. <laughs> <clears throat> what, what else is on the agenda? One more hearing. <laughs> wow. Never had a spectator before. Oh, okay. This is great. Uh, final uh, hearing, final item on this evening's agenda is hearing number BZA-2021-14. This is a request for a variance from the fence requirements in table 3-8.1.2. Figure 3-8.1.2 of the Unified Development Ordinance for a Residential Lot. Location is 419 Wilson Road, Tax map number 01765-02-007. Owner of record is Alice Fleming. Applicant is, and I'm going to mispronounce this, I apologize, Carm Carmenita Fleming. Zoning district is Neighborhood Conservation 6.1. And we will now hear from city staff. Thank you. All right, uh, the property owner is requesting a variance from the requirements of the ordinance regarding fences and residential districts. Uh, according to table 3-8.1.2, fences in front yards must be less than four feet tall and have 50% transparency. And also according to figure 3-8.1.2, the finished side of the fence must face any abutting property. The applicant lives on the north side of Wilson Road, uh, just west of Oakland Avenue. This is a close up. It's a uh, single family residential neighborhood and it is zoned NC 6.1, which is a single family zoning district. This is the requirement, or this is the table that I just cited regarding the um, maximum height for front yard sign, uh, fences to be four feet and uh, transparency of 50%. And they can be placed on the property line. There is no setback from property lines. And then fences or walls in excess of the maximum allowed height shall require a variance from the board zoning appeals, which is why this is before you tonight. And uh, figure 3812 talks about the uh, fence, orient fence orientation being with the finished side towards the abutting property. And, um, but as you see, this fence it, uh, is not oriented quite that way. The purpose of the fence that the uh, owner has put up is because she was having continuous problems with the, the next door neighbor immediately to her west at 417. As you can see on the uh, site plan there, the yellow is the newly installed six foot tall wooden stockade fence. And the uh, blue line is the continuation of the property line, but there's no fence on that blue line. It goes along the entire side property line between the two properties. And on the left is a copy of the incident report that we obtained from the police department um, regarding uh, the police have been called numerous times to that site and um, they have been cited for vandalism, drugs, uh, scene and harassment, um, phone calls and speech, malicious speech. Um, and apparently they've been called numerous other times but did not actually file any official uh, complaints. As you can see on the picture on the left, the houses are very close together. Um, and then, and apparently there were issues with the neighbors being on that porch and hassling people as they came and went from the house, from the side door there. So they installed the fence along the property line and it does go to the front property line, but because of the depth of the street right of way, it does not go all the way to the street. And as you can see, uh, that's the view from Wilson Road. And then as you can tell, um, there's plenty of room to see around the fence for people coming and going from the driveways. It does disrupt uh, visibility. If you were sitting on a porch in one of those houses and we're looking down, obviously it's going to disrupt visibility that way. But as far as traffic is concerned, it does not appear to cause any issues with that. And the variance conditions that a variance from the terms will not be contradictory, um, will not conflict with public interest. Uh, the applicant is looking for a degree of privacy that would not be possible without, um, if the, we literally applied the ordinance to her situation, that the spirit of the ordinance would be observed, public safety and welfare secured and justice done. 
The intent of the ordinance is to provide visibility and openness along a, the street in a residential area. And while this request does affect the front yard, only one side is affected and the portion closest to the street has been left open. That there are extraordinary exceptional conditions. Um, the physical aspects of this property and structure are similar to others in the vicinity, but the property owner is seeking privacy from the adjacent property to mitigate uh, the effects as previously described that these conditions do not generally apply to other property. Um, the adjacent property has a history of police calls and the applicant and other neighbors have also outlined other perceived nuisances. And those are in the letters that you've received and I've received um, a dozen more. And I do have a few excerpts uh, later on here in this. Um, because of the conditions, the application would of the ordinance would effectively prohibit the utilization of the property as follows. Uh, requiring adherence to the specifics of the fence ordinance would not provide an adequate level of screening and privacy as, as sought, and that the authorization of the variance would not be a substantial detriment. Uh, because the fence does not go to the street, it will not affect visibility from adjacent driveways, and the fence is a non-permanent structure, which could be removed um, if the problem has been taken care of, like if the neighbor were to move uh, the problematic, um, it could certainly be removed in the future. Um, here are some excerpts from the signed letters that I received. Um, I'll read them through quickly. The, and then this is the family that provided the letter. They didn't, we do not have a problem with the fence that the Flemings have on their property. Uh, they needed a fence just like they have it because I was worried about their safety and security. The police sometimes at night park in our back driveway to watch the house. They put the fence up for their security and safety and I would have done the same thing. The fence is no way an eyesore. I thought one day I may put up a fence. I also believe it's very much needed per discussions I've had with other neighbors, including the neighborhood watch president. There's a lot of foot traffic, loud music, disturbing parties that go on at the house right next door. As a member of this community, I think she should keep her gate. I, keep, I see no reason she should have to take it down. It has been brought to our attention, the complaints issued against her in regards to her privacy fence, devaluing the property of other homes. We don't have an issue with her privacy fence. The privacy fence they own has beautified the house and I'm sure will increase the value of the property. Lately, we've been having some unpleasant issues in the neighborhood that need to be addressed. So in total, we received one phone call complaining about the fence and their complaint was just that when they, that people would not be able, but it wasn't from somebody who actually lives on Wilson Road. They live in the neighbor neighborhood. They just said they, you know, if they, if they lived on Wilson, they'd be concerned with the lack of visibility. Um, and then, like I said, we got 12 signed letters in support of it. So that concludes staff's report. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for city staff from members of the board? Just, yeah. So I just want to make sure I'm clear on this because I think I'm seeing this right. So it's a variance for the four foot to a six foot and then it's facing the wrong way to correct. And it's supposed to that. be plus uh, fences in the front yard are supposed to be 50 percent transparent like a picket fence right so it acts all three then correct okay <clears throat> so um how much of the fence is is actually in the front yard it looks to be maybe 35 or 40 feet uh yes because the house has a front setback i believe it's about 30 feet so. so the section of fence between the houses actually is not in violation that's correct it's from the front plane of the house forward forward i'm sorry i do have one more it looks like is if, I, if i'm looking in the picture correctly is it does it is it two step when y'all went out is it tiered up at a different level it looks like it's six foot then or maybe i can just yeah ask you can ask them. the applicant okay. about it. it looks like it goes six foot but then it looks like it elevates in this picture but it could just be the picture Yeah, yes, I see what you mean. It appears, that, it appears that there's a slope from the driveway to where yeah. the fence is. We, we can, we can yeah, ask we'll about it. it. Or it may just be the angle of the camera. <laughs> I have no more. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for city staff? All right, they're being done. Thank you very much. The board will now hear from the applicant. Ms. Fleming, are you here? All right. If you don't mind, please, ma'am, please step up to the podium. You dropped your glasses, ma'am.
Maybe Ahmad, please, ma'am, please state your name clearly into the microphone. My name is Alice Fleming. All right, Ms. Fleming, do you promise that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? The whole truth. All right, All right. you may proceed. Okay, I was living there 25 years. All right. And I never really had no problem mm -hmm. until about this last year. I done in and out of neighbors, they move in and out. Okay, this last neighbor been there maybe about 10 years. And the company he keeps. But this time he moved in a girlfriend with all her grown kids. And you talking about neighbors out of hell <laughs> and neighbors that to me they wasn't used to anything. Right. They they came in because they was wild, mm -hmm. even the mother. So this particular day had really started. I came out beside them, because this house is close anyway to y'all, you know, but I never had no problem. And I come out, I say, you let us smoke right here at my door. He said, well, they can't smoke in the house. Though. So I said, you really have changed. I said, I've known you past years. You would never allow that. Not even a dog in the yard, you know, anything. Because we had one, but we didn't, you always respect other people's property. Sure. But he changed totally. And when he left and went on the road, but he didn't put them in respect. They didn't have no respect for us. Cursing, loud noise, late at night, all kind of traffic. That's why I started calling the police. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't have to be up here now because Betty Gray know all of this. She was with me from the beginning. And in the end, she pulled back. I have a problem with that mm -hmm. because we're supposed to be friends. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I said it to say this. Then she did, she said, y'all need to get a fence. Before we even decided to do anything, y'all need to get a fence, y'all need to get a fence. So, them, so they won't be walking all in your yard. You know what I'm saying? At the time, I had to think about it. But what really, really pushed to the back, when they kept trying to tell me that if I come out the yard, because I work my yard all the time, mm -hmm. I'm being noticed trying to see what they do. It's like they're trying to make me stay in my house. If my daughter, my son come over, he came over one day, them guy, oh, we'll rob him. Oh, God, they, they weren't talking indirectly, but we know they're talking to us. It was one thing after another. I have never been in, in no kind of environment like that. I'm not used to people like that. Mm -hmm. So what they were trying to do to me, you know how people move in your neighborhood and most people try to move out mm -hmm. and they just take the neighborhood. I went over there one day and I told them I was living here 25 years and I'm not going this God called me home. I respect y'all and I and I plan for y'all to respect me. Mm -hmm. And I try, I try to talk to him, but see, when he started going to get the women, he started saying, I, I stole his lawn How in the devil see your lawnmower? We right next door. And used to let me use your lawn. You know what I'm saying? He just turned to different. Right. So it got to the point that we walked out the door and had something to say. So that's the reason why I got a private fence. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, tell what he said, tell me, she got to help him. Go ahead. I mean, that's the reason why. Let's, let's do it one at a time. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's the reason why it's private fence because okay. we couldn't even. I mean, it was just that bad. Right. And speak into the microphone. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. I was just like, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it, it was just just un yes, unbearable. Okay. So I did it for safety mm -hmm. and security. Okay. Because if a man was at my house, somebody probably would have been dead. Yes, ma'am. That's how bad it got. So I'm asking for you all to please let me keep my fence for my safety. Yes, ma'am. Because my daughter leaves to go help take care of father and I'm home by myself. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time now, they not there at the moment, but he don't care. I mean, who he bringing up next? He's still dealing with the same woman anyway. So yes, all I'm saying is you have to be in in order to know it. Gotcha. That's how bad it is. And if I hadn't put up a fence in 25 years, you think I'm going to put up a fence and I'm almost 70? Think about it. Yes, so it had to be a reason. Yes, okay, Ms. Dodd. Wait, wait, wait a second, Ms. Ms. Alice. Oh, I think we got some questions for you. Are there any okay. questions for Ms. Alice Fleming for members of the board? Yeah, I just have a couple of one or so. Just who um, who put the fence up? We just got some friends stuff we know that help us. So y'all did it yourselves. Yeah. I got you. And is it stepped up? Is it higher? As we only put it higher, up? not at front. It yeah, only yeah. put it higher with that deck. Gotcha. Because Thank my you. neighbor that was living before, when he put the deck, I came on, that's it, but he had a disabled child and he needed it. 
He needed it to, um, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to help his disabled child. I didn't have a problem with that. We would use the same, you know, side with Because once he put the fence up, he didn't have no land on the other side. Gotcha. You got me? But I didn't have a problem with that. Didn't have a problem with the new neighbor I got until he just flipped the coop when he got this different one. Hmm. Are there any questions from Ms. Alsop? Any others? Right. Thank you very much. But let me tell you this before I go. Sure. Whatever. I don't want her to have anything to do with um, voting on this, Betty Gray. I don't oh, okay, know what okay. board she on. I know she on one of them. I'm just laying you know straight up. She, well, she's not on this board. Well, I just want to make sure because like I said, you no, know, because we're supposed to be friends. The one I'm saying, if yes, your friend, if you don't do what she wants you to do, and that's not right. right. That's not right. Y'all know that. Yes, ma'am. If I don't put up what you want me to put up, mm -hmm. come on now. Everybody work. I go to work. I don't pay for nobody for nothing. Mm -hmm. So we had to do what we had to do to keep them looking at them. Yes, ma'am. So uh, that's there's some lemon dog speak now. All right. And Hello, how are you? Good. If you don't mind, just state your name clearly. Carmenita Fleming. All right, Ms. Fleming, do you promise that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? I do. All right, you may proceed. I just wanted to reiterate some of the things that my mother stated. As she stated, we didn't just put a fence up just to put a fence up. We couldn't come outside the house. It was verbal threats. I think what really done it for me was when my brother, I mean, my brother came from Lake City, and they said, we will slap a B.A. nigga. I'm trying not to be vulgar, but I'm just saying that sure. I have to state it like it is. Right. And we are robbing. Well, my brother felt like he had to step outside of his car with his gun when he's walking into the house. It was always a lot of unnecessary talking. And we didn't say anything. We, we held our peace. And it was so hard for me to take that. Even it was verbal threats against me. I had to wrestle my daughter down one time because these kids are her age. And she was to the point where she wanted to call some people, you know, to get on their level. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Woods, which is the neighbor that we put the fence up on, he's a truck driver. He's never there, but he allowed the stuff to go on while he was there. So when we were talking, when we were in talks of putting a fence, I said, well, let me see if he just handled it. He never handled it. They got worse when he came and seemed like once they left, once he went back on the road, it was like, okay, it's the green light to do what we want to do, which is unfair. The neighbor that she's talking about, about the fence, she was there every time because we called her because she was the neighborhood president. She would tell us to call the police um, if we smelled the marijuana, if about the verbal threats, etc. A lot of times we didn't call. We tried. We tried, Lord, not to call. But it was getting to the point where I could no longer take it either. I lost it. I completely lost it. And they didn't care. I mean, they was it, two or three o'clock in the morning, like 10, 11 on that deck when we coming out the back door at night, smoking marijuana. I don't smoke. I never did. Mm -hmm. Imagine 10, 11 people smoking weed. I mean, I know people can do what they want to do on their property, but you got to be able to respect other people's property as well and presence. You can't just do anything and disrespect neighbors or whatever. He's never been like that, but he did not care. He is still talking to this young lady. Everything that we know as far as the gangs, the threats, the drugs, they said verbally. They made sure we heard it. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor that she's talking about, son, is aware of all of this. That's how she has her information because he was at Mr. Wood's residence and he told him the stuff and he told his mother. Mm -hmm. So that's where the conflict of interest is. I'm not going to even mention names, but when Derek came to the house to put the sign up, she asked him, she said, well, hmm, who's on the planning board? Oh, I'll call this particular person. And I'll call and talk to them. I don't know if she did or not, but I was uncomfortable with that situation from the beginning because the facts are the facts. It does not change who you are. Circumstances does not change because of a person. We were verbally abused, attacked, and everything else. And it, you know, you try to do everything by the law, yes. but sometimes the law don't protect you. I call. Kobe came over there. I called about another situation. The officer was like, we are aware of what's going on. What they did was move from the front porch to the side deck so they couldn't see him, so they would leave. You know, my mother was there by herself. Like mm -hmm. she stated, I take care of my father. Right. When we come in, it's always something to the point where it was like, I'm going to intimidate them where they don't even come outside the house. The reason why it was so high on the deck, because we couldn't even sit on a porch without anything being said. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always something. And coming in the middle, 
if you notice the pictures were before the fence or even the cement got up, probably in the middle, she didn't say anything about it because we both used it. Right. He thought that was his property in the middle. But when the problems start coming between the kids, how are both of us going to walk in the middle of the property? If you thinking it's yours and we got to walk in, my mother's always in the yard and then you got these kids walking and disrespecting, mm -hmm. not saying anything. So, you know, she did it for safety and security, I think, for all of us, because it was just getting that bad. My brother had got to the point, like I said, you got to walk outside with a gun. He said, I'm not playing with these kids. I have a pacemaker and I'm going to have to protect myself because they were making threats. It was a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And like she said, if you hadn't been through it, you don't understand it. I mean, people are sometimes victim of circumstances. You can't help how you was raised. But my daughter knows not to sit there and be disrespectful to elders or people old enough to be my age. Mm -hmm. She knows that. They did they were from the woods. Miss <laughs> Fleming, I, I appreciate Sorry. that very much. No, 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 that's okay. I, I, I yeah. don't know. I, I've never, I'm not used to it. Right. I feel like I was in a mood. That's right. It's other stuff I could say, but I'm trying to be respectful. Like I said, yes, that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time. Yes, Are there any questions, Miss Fleming, for members of the board before we move on? All right. Thank you both very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else that wishes to be heard either for or against the application? All right, there being none, the chair will now entertain a motion to either approve or deny the variance request as submitted. Chair would like to remind the board that you can submit more than one motion in a hearing, in case anybody was nervous. Actually, I have a question. Yes, sir. For the city, um, is it permissible uh, that we grant the variance to the current donor and not to the property in perpetuity, <clears throat> so that if the property changes, um, if, if, if she ever sells the property or if the property transfers to somebody else, they would either be required to bring the fence into compliance or come back to the board for another variance. Orders, orders from the BZA typically follow the property, right. typically. Um, Um, I'm sure the board could make a motion to that effect, but to be honest, it would be very difficult to track in the future unless it was accompanied through some deed restrictions or through some some document that was reported at the courthouse. Okay. So, um, um, and, and to be honest, I'd probably have to refer to the city attorney to clarify some of that, but typically variances follow the life of the property or follow the property from one owner to the other. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Chair, we now entertain a motion to either approve or deny the variance request. Make a motion to approve um, that a variance from the terms of this ordinance will not be contrary to the public interest where owing to special conditions, a literal enforcement of the provisions will in an individual case result in an unnecessary hardship. The applicant is looking for a degree of privacy that would not be met by a literal application of the ordinance to her situation. That the spirit of the ordinance will be observed, public safety and welfare secured and substantial justice done. The intent of the ordinance is to provide visibility and openness along the street in a residential area. While this request does affect a portion of the front yard, only one side is affected and the portion closest to the street is open. That there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property. The physical aspects of the property and structure are similar to others in the vicinity. However, the property owner is seeking privacy from an adjacent property to mitigate effects previously described. That these conditions do not generally apply to other property in the vicinity. 
The adjacent property has a history of police calls. The applicant and other neighbors have also outlined other perceived nu nuances. That because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance to the particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property as follows. Requiring adherence to specifics of the fence ordinance will not provide an adequate level of screening. That the authorization of a variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good and the character of the district will not be harmed by the granting of the variance. The fence does not go to the street it does not affect visibility from adjacent driveways. The fence is a non-permanent structure which could be removed in the future. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Chico. All those in favor signify, all those in favor of approving the variance request signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries, the variance request is approved. Are there any other Items that need to be discussed before we adjourn from city staff. Um, I do. I will just uh, give the board an update on our comprehensive planning process. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we, as you know, we um, are in the midst of our update to our or our rewrite for our comprehensive plan. That's the ten-year guidance document for the city, um, ten to twenty-year outlook for the city, actually. Okay. And uh, it was delayed due to COVID. You know, we had some some trouble with the public hearings and such. However, we we did go back into into play with that. We did some Zoom public hearings. Um, we are taking that through. We are getting draft versions in now um, of certain sections. Uh, we have a committee together that is reviewing that. Um, as the, the draft versions are, are kind of made more official, we'll roll them out to the board okay. for, for their review as well and, and keep everybody up to date. We anticipate um, an adoption uh, we were shooting for the end of the year, but we're now kind of in a, in a timeline where we're probably January, February timeline. Okay. But, but we'll definitely keep the board up to date. And when those draft versions roll out, we'll, we'll send them to all of our boards and commissioners. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Do you have any training on that? Ma'am? Any training on that? On that we'll, um, I, I'll be glad we'll have some, some um, public, you know, some, some presentations for the public. We'd love all of our, our, boards and commission members to come and, and, and be a part of that kind of public hearing process. And uh, the uh, consultants that we've hired with Kendi Keast will do, um, and APD will do some official um, kind of uh, presentations regarding that. So I would encourage all of you to attend. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. I'll make the motion to adjourn. All those approved, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. This evening's meeting is adjourned. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. There we go. Thank you guys for everything. Yes.